John Mendez here with our next how-to. This one's going to be about how to launch your boat. So we've borrowed a really nice new 8 metre ballistic with T-top on it and quite a weight so we need to think carefully about what we're doing and we've just parked it at the top of the slipway ready for our launch. Now normally you'd park away from the slipway and get all your prep done before you got to the slipway itself but we're in a private area here, this is uh, Trafalgar Wharf in Portsmouth. We've got an enormous dry stack facility and we're just going to be using their contractor slipway to just show you how we would go through our launch procedure. So first thing we want to do, think about how far you've travelled. If you've come a fair way, the wheels, bearings and all the bits on the trailer itself will be quite warm. So you might want to park up while you're doing your prep, let it all cold down. The key thing is we don't block the slipway. Now. Because we're parked on the slipway, I've got my magic tool which I'm going to pop under the wheels and that will just stop it rolling back in case I do anything wrong. So we just chop that in there, that's super, that keeps it all safe. And then I'm going to start at the stern because that's where I have to think about what do I need to do. So first thing is the propeller won't work with this on. So the first thing I've got to do is remove the cover off the propeller. You look a bit of a wally if you launch it with this on. And the other thing I need to do is trim the engine up just a fraction so I can remove the trailer lock. And what that does is it takes the whole weight of the engine off the hydraulic ram onto a bracket which keeps it nice and secure while you're actually towing the boat. Just lowered that enough so that when we drop the boat in the water we'll be just starting to immerse it. I don't want it too low because if I get it wrong on the slipway I'm going to damage the skeg. My next task is to take the trailer arms and on this one they're waterproof so we can just slide them in but if you had a trailer board you'd need to release the trailer board and disconnect the electrics. This is all done on a waterproof system so what we have to do I'm just going to pop that in the boat what we do on these is they've got handles here that we undo and then we can just slide the whole thing in and out of the way. And we'll just move this one in as well. And just lock it off so we don't have any disasters. Next thing I'm going to do is going to take my bow line, and it's useful to have a bow line attached to a D-ring anyway. So we're going to put it on the D-ring, around the trailer, and then into the boat so I can release the line from on board. So, we just go through like that. Thread this in through. That gives me a bow line from when I'm afloat. And then I'm gonna go around there, like so. And then I can stand on the trailer because that makes life nice and easy. I'm just gonna tie it off on my Samson post. Now, if you haven't got a Samson post, just use the cleat that's inside. That'll be fine. Might need to do that from inside the boat, but I can manage everything from here. Quite happy with that. Means we can't go anywhere. Now that we've got the bow tied on, we can now start releasing the straps at the stern of the boat. So these things are a bit of a finger eater. So the technique is open it slightly, and then as you pull against it, that allows you to release the ratchet part inside, and then you work the two ratchets, and the tension comes off. As it comes off, you'll get to the point where the strap will actually pull through. We pull this strap off. And then the other thing that I haven't mentioned at the stern, if we just go round, is I need to make sure that the trunks, which are the way of draining the boat if it's full of water, if you have a bit of a big wave or if it's been raining a lot, just need to make sure they're fully pulled up. So these release on a cam system up the top here. So when you leave the boat, if it's not got a cover on, if you leave it with these trunks down, any water which accumulates in the hull is released 
leave you with a nice dry boat. But of course, if you launch with the trunks down, the water can work its way back in. So once you've done that, tuck them up, make sure they're locked off. Okay, so that's both of the stern straps off. I'm just popping them in the boat for the moment. It's quite nice to have a bag to put all these in. It just makes it nice. Roll them up if you're being really good and then it's really easy to reattach it all. Now as we come back round, I'm now going to remove this strap, which is holding the boat forward, because it's not really doing anything now, which means we'll only have the winch and my black line holding the boat. So I'm still chocked, so the boat and trailer's not going anywhere. Once I've released this, my driver, or if I was on my own, would remove the boat down the slipway till the wheels are just above the water. So the boat actually, if it fell off, would land in the water. Then I would release the winch strap, climb on board, and I'm then ready for my last part of launch, which is let the trailer into the water far enough to allow the boat to come off, but not so far that I don't have control of the boat as it leaves the trailer. I want to be in control. I don't want it to just disappear off the end. But this one, I've got to pull the strap all the way through because it's got to go through my D-ring. So I'm just going to climb over. One little top tip, never walk around the stern of the boat because if anything went wrong, you're in danger. So always come either around the truck or through here. Right, so another nice little feature on our stainless trailer, nothing is rusty, everything's really super duper. So now we're ready for our driver to just push us down to the waterline, off with the bow strap, hop in, obviously make sure the battery's on, I did that before I could lower the engine. We'll get it just wet enough that I can drop the engine and start, and then reverse off in one nice smooth movement. That's the plan. Okay, so we're pretty much ready for going down the slipway. Key thing, just make sure the bung's in. This one's quite unusual. It's right the way down there, but it's actually fed in from inside. So that little hole right at the bottom there, that's where our bung lives. And obviously, don't forget to move your chock, because otherwise that would be quite difficult. So bung in, chock out. It's going to come down the slipway, then I'll get in, and then hopefully we'll be ready to go. So I'm nicely in the boat. What we'll need to do now is put the boat back into the water. I'm going to go forward and release my bow line come back and start my engine as long as I'm happy, drop the engine far enough and then I'm just going to reverse the boat off. Okay. Now we've managed to stop there just before the truck gets wet, which is really nice. So the wheels are just touching the water. So I'm just going to go forward and looking at my line, I still haven't got a great deal of weight on that, so that's fab. We can undo that. Lean forward. Line's still secure, that's all great. Move aft. Then I'm just gonna drop the engine down a weeny bit. Kill cord on. We're deep enough at the stern, so now I'm just going to make sure my helm is nice and straight and pop her into a stern. And let's see if we can make it move. Not moving at the moment, so we'll just come into neutral again. Another, another metre, please. One metre. And as he does that, keep the engine nice and straight. As soon as she's moving, back into neutral. Kill cord's on all the time. Just one click of a head here, just to stop the boat. And now we're in enough water, two meters now. We can trim the engine fully down. Really nice and simple. There's no rush, just a little tab of revs, just to get her moving. As he's reversing, my momentum plus his stop just drifts the boat off the end and the engine's taking it back, giving you control. Now he's driven away to clear the slipway ready for the next person.
極端。